Samsung Galaxy S6 and Galaxy S6 Edge have finally gotten the Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow update. Let's go ahead and talk about what's new and the new features Marshmallow brings. I've received the update on both my Galaxy S6 and Galaxy S6 Edge. It's important to note that the update is exactly the same on both devices. You'll see 6.0.1. However, with the Edge, it has a couple Edge features that are new. I'll talk about those in just a second. And also I want to make note that there are a couple features on the Galaxy S7 that are not included on the Galaxy S6's version of Marshmallow. Real quick, as always, you can quickly tap on Android version to get to that Easter egg I was on, and then you can press and hold this icon to get to your Android Flappy Bird if you would like to play that as well, which was in Lollipop, for those of you that didn't know. In terms of the lock screen, the icons in the bottom left for the dialer and bottom right for the camera got updated. You can also use a pattern with your fingerprint scanner as well. And in terms of the fingerprint scanner, it seems like it's a little bit faster, maybe just a bit of a placebo after an update, but to me it seems a little bit quicker. And Android 6.0 brings better integration with the fingerprint scanner when you can make purchases of certain apps and things from the Play Store just using your fingerprint as opposed to typing in a password. Pressing and holding the power button reveals an updated look to the power menu where you press the icon and have to tap it again to activate either power off or restart. There's emergency mode as well. Pulling down the status bar reveals an updated look. I do want to make note I have not used applied any themes as well, so this is the complete stock look. You can swipe over on these quick widgets still. You can swipe down twice to reveal all of them. As usual, you can still use two fingers to reveal all of them. Now, I also want to make note there's a quick notification settings option right there, which jumps straight into notification settings, where you can actually go to advanced settings on a per app basis and change which apps show certain uh, notifications. Now, for example, let's say I want to go to the calculator app. Now, notifications are allowed. You can set them as priority. You can hide on lock screen, hide content on lock screen, and preview in pop-ups. So if you want uh, specific pop-ups to come down, uh, it's called peaking. You can customize that as well. So nice update with Marshmallow and customizations to notifications. The home launcher didn't get too much of an update, still in app drawer, still horizontal. Now, one thing I want to make note of is it didn't apply uninstall from home screen. So when you press and hold on an icon, there's no uninstall button, which is on, which was added in Marshmallow. However, there's a move apps option where you can add a bunch of, a couple different apps all the way up here. Then you can swipe over different pages if you want to go ahead and now drag and drop these specific apps to different pages. So that's just an update to the launcher. Now pressing and holding again, the theme store got a bit of an update. So you'll see a bunch of different themes tapping on more. There's just a new look to the theme store, which is nice. I'm really glad that they're going all out with the theme store just because a lot of people like to customize their own device. Moving along, a new feature is called Google Now on tap, pressing and holding the home button, and it's going to read your display what's on it and gives you some contextual search results based on what it reads. As you can see, you have some information about Chipotle. I do have a full review on Google Now on Tap. I'll link to that in the description if you're interested. Now, text selection got a bit of an update as well. So you press and hold on a, a word, for example, and then when you go to the right, it's going to go word by word, which is a nice addition. And then when you go to the left, it goes letter by letter. So just a little bit different right there. You also see down at the bottom, the new emojis have been added with 6.0.1. You do have all of those updated emojis. So if you get some of the new ones from iOS users, you will see them now. Uh, when you go ahead and do share, there is something called direct share, which over time it's going to not only select contacts, but also select applications that you commonly share to. So for example, let's say I text my friend Joe all the time. So it's going to bring up Joe in the messaging app as a direct share option. So that's another nice addition to Marshmallow. You may have tried it, but Samsung has a new updated internet 4.0 that might be worth giving a try. As you can see, I'm loading up for the first time here. There's a new secret mode. There's a couple other new awesome features. I have a full review of this full browser. I'll link to that in the description if you want to check out some of the new features as well. Now let's jump into settings. And one of the very simple ones that got added was under sounds and vibration, you can now toggle charging sound. That wasn't there before. That's just a new thing that got added. I mentioned earlier there were per app notification settings, but there's also per app permission settings. So we go into the application manager. It's gonna load up the apps. Let's say for example, I go to the camera app and I do not want it to access my location. So tapping on it and then you'll see permissions right here. You can customize what certain permissions that it can use. So for example, I don't want 
it to be able to use my location. So now when I go into the camera application, you know any picture you take is not going to be location-based because you turned off that permission. So a nice addition from Samsung. Also, speaking of this recent apps button, that animation got a little bit of an update. As you can see, it kind of cascades down. A little bit of a difference when you scroll through apps as well. Uh, a little bit bigger when the app is full front and center. Also a smart manager feature which talks about battery life, storage, RAM, device security. In terms of RAM, you can kind of see how much RAM each specific app is using by tapping on it and going into memory. As you can see, you can go into more info as well. And speaking of battery life, uh, it, Marshmallow has added Doze, so you should see an increase in battery life, especially when the device is sitting idly on a display, on a table or anything like that not being used. It does a much better job at conserving your battery life, so expect to see that. Now grabbing my Galaxy S7, the main difference I noticed is under advanced features where there is a games option in the S7's menu, such as Game Launcher and Game Tools as well. The S6 did not add that. And also important to note that it does not have always on display, always on display being when your display is off, it's going to show the time, some notifications, battery percentage, and the date. You cannot add that on the Galaxy S6. So that those are the two main differences in the Marshmallow update that weren't added on the S6 compared to the S7. Finally, I want to talk about what's new on the S6 Edge with that update. And of course, with the Edge, adds a couple features. The only one that really got an update was the swipe over option. So you see you still have Apps Edge. You have some tasks such as create message, create contact, swiping over again. You have something such as Yahoo News. You'll see it adds a little bit more information. Now, when you swipe over, you'll see settings down here. Jump into those and you can customize what shows up such as People Edge. You have weather, stocks, sports, um, you can also download specific ones that are in a store, which is, is nice because then you can add more customizations. So going back, you can also change what side it's on, how transparent it is, the size, and also what position that it's in as well. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the S6 Edge and the Marshmallow update. Obviously, all of those new features I showed off on my S6 are on the S6 Edge as well. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. That would be the Marshmallow update on both my S6 and S6 Edge. I will revisit both of them in a video coming very soon. So click that subscribe button if you're interested in watching that. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links are in the description of the video below. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching.